My name is Brett Romero, and we're going to look at how to create an overall professional look to a website by aligning elements on the website using grids, particularly grid frameworks. And in this case, we're going to use the 960 grid framework. There are two areas that are going to be covered. The first is quick alignments using grid overlays, and the second being implementing a grid framework, which provides you with the scaffolding that you can use to create precise alignment of website elements. So let's jump right in and get started. This is the grid system that we're going to be working with. It's called the 960 grid system. And you can reach it by going to 960.gs. Click on grid overlay bookmark and that's going to install a bookmark into your browser. Now what that does is you can see here it puts this overlay on a website. And this is just a miniature version of the Drupal website. I'll hide this overlay so there you can see exactly what it's doing. So with the grid framework, you get this overlay. And this is not anything your visitors or customers will see. This is something you use to help you align your elements. You can see the Economist banner ad here is well aligned. It's sitting in these columns and the edges are aligned right into these white lines which are called gutters. This is the space in between each column. You can see this button down here, this green one. It's also well aligned using these columns. The left edge of the button is aligned into the first column, and the right edge of the button is aligned into the fourth column. So there's a lot of guidance here on how to create alignment of these different elements. You can see here the Drupal icon as well is aligned right into this column. So this is basically what grid overlays and frameworks help us do. And to your visitors, this is a nice perception and, and instinctively just creates this overall professional look of your website. Now we're going to move into the actual implementation. And what you want to do is download the framework and we're going to get started implementing it. Once you download and unzip the file from 960.gs, these are the folders that are included. And in particular, the main folder is this code folder. If I open this up, we have a CSS folder and an IMG folder. These are the folders you don't want to upload to your website. But if you already have folders named CSS or IMG, you can just upload the files in these folders and add them to your existing CSS folder and then upload the images and add those to your existing IMG folder. These are the files that we're going to be referencing while we're building our grid. And this is used for the case that you want to implement the grid into your website and not just use the bookmark overlay. To get a good comparison of how a grid framework can help us with alignment of elements on our website, we're going to start off with this website here, which is a basic website having a navigation at the top, footer at the bottom. It's got this main content section. And it's also got this sidebar out here on the right. And then it's got this other little piece of sidebar that's stuck next to the main sidebar area. Now let's say I wanted to do some aligning with this sidebar. I want it to basically take up 25% of the right side of this page here. I want the content to take up 75%. And what I would end up with is 3 fourths and one-fourth split of the content. To do that would take a lot of adjusting inside of the code that I have because I would have to also compensate. I've got a margin here of 15 pixels. So you can see what I'm having to do here. I'm, I'm having to create widths for this little piece of content here. So this is 100 pixels because my entire width is 1,000 pixels wide. And then I'm having to also add a width for the sidebar, the main sidebar. This is 100 pixels right here. And then I've got a width for my main content. Now if I want to readjust, I've got to go back and readjust all these widths that I've added in right here so that I can get that 3 fourths and 1 fourth alignment. If we look at the same website with a grid framework implemented into it, it looks like this. Now these pink columns are just an overlay. They'll disappear if I want them to, but 
I'm leaving them there so we can see how the alignment works out. So earlier, I wanted three fourths on my content, which you can see is happening here, and then I want one fourth over here, which I've got. How do I know that? Well, this is a 12 column grid system. Each one of these pink columns right here counts as just a single column. The white is the gutter area. This is just space between the columns. The content is taking up nine columns. The sidebar is taking up three columns. So we've got nine out of 12 is three fourths. And then we've got three columns out of 12, which is one fourth. That's pretty simple. That's going to have the alignment I'm looking for. So we're going to see how to implement this. How did I get this? Because then we can really change this kind of three-fourth and one-fourth really quick. We could make this one half and this one half, and that wouldn't take very long at all. We wouldn't have to worry about margins, how wide are our margins. Are we going over our total container size? We wouldn't really have to worry about those kinds of things. So we're going to basically take this website and transform it into a grid system. So I'm going to copy all of this code out and paste into a new file so that now we've got our original website. So I'm using the 960 grid system and what I want to do is copy the four main files out of this demonstration here and I'm just going to paste them in right here. So the four files were referencing reset, text, 960, and then this demo is the overlay. And you can remove that once you're done, and those pink columns will also go away. To get the floats for these divs to align like this, you can see that the order here for this testing 10 is actually the first div after our navigation and that might seem odd because it's furthest right it would seem as though this content div would go first and then the sidebar div would go and then this testing 10 but actually it's flipped all the way around and that's just because of how the float works so this is a float right this is the testing 10 this is the main sidebar it's also a float right and then down here we've got our main content now, you would need to know all of this and how that works to get this kind of alignment using just some basic CSS, but with the grid system, we don't need to worry about that. We also don't have to worry about all these widths, so I can remove these widths, and I'll just start putting in some grid syntax here, and we'll, we'll see how this will begin to transform. So right now you can't really see much, but I'm going to replace our container class with, uh, we're going to go with a 16, actually we're going to go with a 12 grid. So there you can see that now we've got our content coming back in. Now I can take this testing 10 and just move it to the bottom, and that seems more logical. And then I can take this aside, and I'm going to also move that below the content. Now we've got our content which goes first, then we've got our sidebar that's after the content, then we've got this testing 10 piece. So that seems a little more logical if we look at our content in the web page. Content first, sidebar, then testing 10. We need to add some additional syntax and this is again it's going to be classes. So we've got this container here that we told it we want a 12 grid. And that's how this will always start. And you put that into a div and you reference the class container 12. Now we're going to move to our first row and that syntax for a row is going to look like this, grid 12. That's for our navigation. It's going to take up this entire row. That is going to be 12 columns wide. Now we're starting a new row, we add a new div. And this div is going to be just called clear, and it's an empty content div. So that creates a new row. And while we're doing this, we know our footer is on a row by itself. So we're going to add a new row there. You can see we use this clear both, but this 
syntax for this class that we're adding that creates a new row. This empty div is going to handle that for us. So this creates a new row and our footer is on a new row. So the content is on a new row and we need to reference a class and since we're dealing with a row we want to do grid and this is not going to be 12 this is actually going to be 9 because remember we want to do 3 fourths so 9 out of 12 is 3 fourths and we're going to do our sidebar we're going to do another class this is on the same row as our main content and we're going to do another grid and this one is going to be a 3 and now our sidebar is lining up now we've got this content right here so I'm going to do something a little different to make this fit in this is going to be again it's on the same row grid 1 and I'm going to change this to a grid 2 so that we can see now we've got things lining up again so if we look at that little piece of content on our original site this is it and we had to really do some gymnastics to get all this to line up. We had to get our floats right in our CSS. We had to get our widths correct. We had to make sure we weren't going outside of our main container width. Now you can see how easily I did that. I don't have any of this, the floats that we had. I don't have any of that CSS syntax here. I don't have to worry about widths in here or nothing like that and everything is just lined up and looks really nice and it's also lined up against these columns here so I can really get a visual of how well I'm lining up. In review I'd invite you to check out the 960.js website and thanks again for watching this video I hope that you get a lot better alignment out of using this whether you do the actual framework implementation or just the overlay. Thanks again.